Hey guys, I just received a rather nice little home delivery. It is another Admiral TV. This one is particularly nice because although I already have this model, when I received mine it had been stripped and horribly refinished. And that would be the Admiral 3812. The Fancy cabinet and nifty diamond grill cloth. This one has the original finish and most of the decals. Now I actually spent a whole bunch of time stripping down mine, which had been coated in polyurethane, and I refinished it. However, I never got around to posting those videos because, well, I lost the raw footage at some point. <laughs> Uh, that was done probably two years ago with my old, old camera, the JVC standard definition camera. Um, but uh, at any rate, the trouble I had uh, once I got the polyurethane off was knowing what color to make it. All I knew was that it was walnut. It's not the most common set, so I had trouble finding photos online, and the ones I did find showed it to be a really dark finish. But now that I've got one in person with the original finish, I can see that I didn't do a very good job. And I'll pull mine out in a minute and put it side by side. You'll see what I'm talking about. I just got this a little while ago, so I don't know much about the condition yet other than what we can see right now. Sure, the cabinet's got its fair share of dings and probably needs a little more than just the casual touch-up with Howard's Restore finish. Well, like some of this is just dirt. I mean, I'll certainly go over and clean it first and see what can be done. This seems like there's definitely some finish loss around the main screen area, which is a shame that's where the decals are. Although, if you recall, I do have some sets of reproduction decals if needed. So if I'm really, really lucky, I can do what I was able to do on that set over there. Which I did refinish, but not the area around here and uh, that was to carefully sand off the decals but not take off the color and then kinda spruce this up with fresh lacquer and embedded new decals in it anyways the reason I'm saying a lot is I, what I really want to do is try to retain the original color or at the very least use this as a reference so I can re-refinish my other cabinet now that I know it should be a nice medium brown walnut very common toner that I use on a lot of my Filco radios. I'm also curious that this has more of a color differentiation than I had expected. I would have thought, when I refinished mine, I tried to make sure get all these different areas to be more of the same color, which ended up I made made it too dark, so I put on too many layers of toner lacquer. All right, so very interesting. Now, as for the insides. Well, right off the bat, I know I'm missing the back. Not the end of the world, though. I've got a few other sets that have this back, and I know that it's just a piece of masonite. It's not metal like their Bakelite sets have. This label, model 3812S. So it's not the really early style. If it was, it wouldn't have the S on there. And it would have channel 1 and a different tuner. Picture tube is here. Base is not loose. It's not cracked. There's just one little screw holding the high voltage cage on. I'll pop that off, take a look inside. Otherwise, it looks to be alright. Not as rusty as some of my other sets. Let's see, your speaker. Uh, speaker looks good. It's great because it's a field coil speaker and kind of a pain to replace when they're bad. Hey, it's got the screen covering. That's a first. Pretty sure that cover's missing from every one of my wood Admiral sets. Oh, and I should mention the best part. It was free. So, the way I got this is... Oh, a little over a year ago, I was contacted by somebody, I think either on Flickr or YouTube, who I guess maybe saw the model number, did a YouTube, uh, uh, so rather a Google web search, and stumbled across my videos or photographs of this set. And he said, hey, I've got that same set. And I guess he uh, works on vintage electronics too, but isn't really a TV guy. And he said, if I wanted it, it was mine. Only problem was he was a bit far away. 
and at the time I was having some car troubles, so I said, you know, maybe someday but not right now, and then he mentioned, well, he had relatives that come out to the Chicago area every year, and they could maybe drop it off. Well, hey, fantastic. But last year, for whatever reason, plans changed and it just didn't happen. But this year, well, obviously it did, because here's the set. Also got a few other things. I haven't really looked at yet. One is this, which is a PACO, which is short for Precision Apparatus Company, I think. It's a transistor and crystal diode tester. Never saw one before. Imagine this is for doing the early type, maybe germanium diodes, maybe early silicon diodes too. I guess you could either plug them into here or use these little clip leads. NPN, PNP. Don't do a whole lot of solid state stuff, but uh, I'll take a look online and see if I can find out more about it. And here is a radio. Service info, so I'm guessing, well, that doesn't quite match. It's not 216. It doesn't quite match either, so I guess it's not a 404. Hey, that looks awfully familiar when <laughs> I had a GE radio and this had completely fallen off the back and I spent way too much time putting it back together. Yeah, that's quite right either. So here is... Looks like the dial glass might be gone. It broke over the years. So that's something else to do a little bit of research on. Interesting chassis. Unless this is... No, that's the way it's not supposed to be mounted. I thought maybe it was just sitting in there at an angle, but no, it was mounted at a, like a 30 degree angle like that. I guess maybe to make room for the speaker up on top. I like how it's uh, all octal, and it's not an All-American 5, because I see at least six tubes in there. Cool. There's, there's, oh, <laughs> there's dial glass. There we go. <laughs> Chip here and there, but otherwise, it's all right. Mm -hmm. This might be a fun little restoration project. Huh? So, some odds and ends, maybe parts from it as well. And below that, I believe, is a bunch of books and magazines. I was laughing as they were taking the stuff out of the vehicle because it seems like the harder I try to get rid of stuff, the more stuff keeps. Showing up. <laughs> oh, got some Sam's photo facts in here. Oh, Jesus, I certainly recognize that. I bet he put this on top intentionally because I've got this. I've got the Motorola 65 T20 T21. A lino pack, buy a supply, seen these before. And adapters for tube tester, looks like there's, there's one in here that lets you test picture tubes with a tube tester. Yeah. I don't know if I have a suitable tube tester this would work with. All radios, but there's some TVs in here too. So it's 
all radios and phonographs. Oh, well, that's different. Transvision TV kits. Probably what, late 50s, maybe 60s? I've seen a few of these before and I always wondered how useful were these really. All you could do is you look up the TV model and you get a little chart showing you the tubes and just a crude way of saying if you look, maybe you don't have sound, maybe the problem is this tube, or if you don't have vertical, the problem could be that tube. But it's awfully simplistic service info. You just get one little diagram for each type of set. Typically, once you've worked on a few TVs, you don't you can just tell by looking at them which which is the sound tube, which is the high voltage output tube, and, or rather horizontal output tube, and so on. It goes with the same company. Shooting gun and more Sam's. And yeah, looks like 100% radios. Mostly all American 5 radios, I think. Uh -huh, there we go. <laughs> Mostly AM table radios with some FM, many air bake lights, some portable clock radios, a few console and chassis for custom install. So here are my two Admiral 30A12 side by side. Obviously the one I refinish is on the right. So not only is the refinished one darker, it's a different kind of brown. I think I used mostly dark walnut on this and I think some perfect brown. Because I was running out of toners as I was doing this. So for example this is a little bit different color than this. But now I've got a reference to go off of. And I have no problems with doing this. I never got around to doing the finish the final coats on it anyways, no decals or anything. It's the nice thing about lacquer. It's very easy to get off. A little steel wool, acetone, lacquer thinner, pfft, twenty minutes or so I could have that whole thing stripped down again. So uh one thing I want to take care of right now is to uh, get this off and put a proper channel knob on. I think I've got some spares lying around. It's fairly common for these to break. The, the tail, I guess you could call it, people from cranking on this over the years, these would snap off, I imagine. This is held on with a set screw, I noticed, so I'm going to get a screwdriver to get that off. It's on there real tight. And then everybody's favorite thing, I'm going to test the picture tube. I loosened up the set screws on this replacement knob, so I think it'll come off now. There we go. Mmm, yummy. Get the crud out of that. And here is what it should look like. Yeah, now that's a channel clunker. You can see why these things break off. Seemed easier to test this while it's still in my living room, so I got my tester out on the couch right now. And here it goes. Yeah, it's glowing. Alrighty. Shorts. Cut off, or just barely, maybe. And we do have emissions that are climbing slowly. I'm 
weird how they're jumping around. Some loose junk inside that electron gun. And we've certainly climbed into the good range. Still not really any cutoff control. Drop the bias range down. Yeah, drop the bias down and a little bit of cutoff, so not so hot. Oh, I'll just let this sit for a while. Some missions are plenty good though. I find it's weird though when on these testers, at least the, this particular model is, although when you put it on cutoff, there's really no deflections that turn the cutoff control, but when you go to emissions and turn the cutoff, that needle moves like crazy, very responsive. So I sometimes wonder how, what does this test really mean? On the other hand, when I have a really good, like, new old stock pitcher tube, the cutoff control definitely moves. The needle moves well into that range and it's very responsive. What I believe the manual says is that this means you will have a nice bright picture but lousy contrast. I'll let this sit for a while, see if things improve any. I let the CRT cook for a while longer and really nothing changed. Nice strong emissions, great life test, cutoff control, seemingly terrible according to the tester, but only true test to that is to try it in a set. Which gets me to thinking that I'm kinda thinking about doing something that I always recommend you don't do and I never really have done on my videos, not on a set this old anyways which is to try firing it up. One reason I want to is I've now got five of these 30A1 chassis Admiral sets. None of them have been restored. I've never seen one of these functioning except on YouTube. So I'd really like to at least attempt it. And of course I'll use the usual safety precautions. Dim bulb, slow startup, variac, whatever. Um, but before I do that, I want to check what's inside here, because if the flyback looks fried, and there's really not any point in continuing on. Because otherwise, the set looks to be in pretty darn good condition. Um, I'm going to pull out a flashlight, too, and take a little bit closer look down inside there. All the tubes are present. And, uh, you know, it doesn't look like it's been messed with, really, or anything. Now, of course, all the caps could be horribly leaky and shorted out, and who knows. But uh, I figure, hey, what the heck, it could be a little uh, cautionary tale if something does burn out. And you know, hey, you never know, I might get at least some sound out of it or a raster. Here's a better look inside. So there's that lower chassis. Of course, all we can see. Is the top side, who knows what the components are like underneath. Likewise up here. I did just take the one last screw out of its cover, so it should come off now. It wasn't really installed properly either. It should have been wasn't quite in the right slot. Alright. Filthy and disgusting. Wow, that is it's a little bit beyond the normal fuzz. Now that might have been from when the set was running and the high voltage static attracted a lot of this fluff. A little bit of rust, and that's about all I've seen so far. This is chassis is pretty darn clean. Ugh. And the set is fused. Although in this particular flavor, when well, there's only one fuse, that's just for the flyback. Later revisions had dual fuses here. One was on the main AC input and the other was just for the flyback. But uh, yeah, it's better than nothing. Alright, so I think I will still proceed with my plans to try carefully firing this set up. I've been pulling a few tubes out 
and cleaning them so when I do try to power this setup I can see what the heck's going on and so far all but one has been an Admiral branded tube including the damper tube, the horizontal output tube, 5Y3 rectifier, 6V6 vertical output tube, 6K6 I think or vertical oscillator tube. In fact the only one that hasn't been Admiral branded is the big 5U4 rectifier down there and the CRT is an RCA but the original CRT may have been an RCA. Admiral, I'm pretty sure, never made their own CRTs. They just rebranded them. And in the old, early days, they may not have even done that. They may have just gone with the RCA right out of the factory. Don't know. Um, but what I'm getting at is, this might be a low hour set if it still has so many original tubes in it. Another Admiral tube. I just popped the rectifier tubes back in. Now, if I had solid state replacements for those handy, I would use them now and slowly power this up on a variac. What that would allow me to do is slowly reform the capacitors. With the tubes in place at lower variac AC line voltages, the rectifier tubes won't start conducting, so you won't be able to put any voltage in the caps until you hit a certain threshold. Which, uh, I'm guessing it's probably going to be 30, 40, 50 percent of the AC line voltage, something like that. But we'll give it a try anyway. So I got my variac at about 50 percent. Still have the light bulb in series. So here it goes. What I want to attempt to do is see that everything still lights up and a little one for a little while with these with this limited juice and then I will feel the canned electrolytics to see if they're getting warm or not. Kind of a crude way to go about doing this but it's a quick and dirty way to try powering a setup uh, rather than just plugging it in and turning it on with no precautions. If you really wanted to try reforming your cap, I would suggest pull the chassis out, disconnect the cap from the circuit, run it on a dedicated capacitor reformer type circuit so you can monitor the leakage current over time. Alright, nothing bad happening, but the, the tubes are barely even lit up. So I Imagine those rectifiers aren't conducting too much, so I'm going to go a little higher on the variac. About 75% power, I'll let it sit here for five minutes or so and then check those caps. I removed the 150 watt light bulb from being in series with the line, slowly increased the variac, got up to about 100 volts or so, everything still seemed to be nice and cool other than the pinging of the chassis as the tubes got hot and so on, a little bit of a burning dust smell like you'll get on old sets. So uh, I'm going up to about 117. And I was just starting to get a little bit of a hum out of the speaker at 100, so let's see what happens here. No light from the CRT yet and didn't hear any kind of whine or crackle from the flyback. It's a nice hum. This set draws a fair amount of power, as you might imagine.
And I noticed that the ion trap was loose. So, might not be in a sweet spot. <laughs> it's got a little bit of a tingle when I touch that ion trap magnet, so it may very well have some high voltage. Check for a high voltage of the probe or anything on these sets because of where the inner uh, you know, cap is. Voltage cover back on because it's got the bad line cord attached to it, so I'm just being real careful. I've loosened up the ion trap magnet more on the neck so I can slide it around more easily. I've also noticed there's a bit of a blue, blue glow coming out of the horizontal output tube, but I don't think it's it's not like red plating or anything, and the uh, high voltage tube filament is glowing. I think that's just that blue glow you kind of sometimes see on the sides of glass in my body of output tube, so I don't think it's anything to be worried about. So, reach back in here. Brighten this up all the way up. It's funny, this contrast control is affecting the audio, so it's changing again. No antenna right now, it's just picking it up on the screw terminals in the back. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Not much, but yeah. Let's focus. Try hooking up uh, the antenna, see if uh, we can pick anything up. Obviously the set has problems, but hey, that's uh, it's pretty remarkable, I think. Considering uh, it's like all the original components, or at least very, very old components in it. You can see it's a nice, bright picture tube, too. Actually, since I'm in my living room now, right now, I was able to just hook this up to cable, so, but yeah. And again, I do not recommend you do this. I have had a set to go up in smoke of selenium rectifiers just let loose a horrendous cloud of fumes. And I've seen plenty of tales online about guys ruining power transformers and all kinds of other nastiness. anything off the cable. I'm not sure which channel this would be though. These channels might be all messed up. Close. 
All right, let's see what the little doggy antenna can do for us. Too messed up. Mostly, I'm just impressed by how uh, bright and sharp the picture tube is. I know it's not doing full raster, which would affect the brightness. But it's, uh, you know, considering how uh, bad that cutoff was, I can certainly see some modulated video on there. See if YouTube flags me for that. <laughs> well, I guess there's one last thing I can try. There is a horizontal uh, course just on the back. I can give that a, give that a try. Okay, I've got my adjustment tool handy here. Just a piece of plastic with a metal slot on one end that goes over the tuning, or rather the horizontal adjustment control of the back. Alright, so the little dog is in the greatest antenna right now. A little bit more fooling around and see if I can channel three or four to work on this thing. I just can't get any input going through channels three or four. I think there's something really messed up on the tuner. This has a turret tuner with pluggable coils. And I'm figuring those coils might be bad, the contacts might be mad, heck, the plug in sections might even be missing. What I've got here is it's actually in channel two. When I put the fine tuning over far enough, I can start to creep a little signal in from channel three. Uh, no sound though. So, uh, I imagine without a whole lot of work, this I could probably be made uh, to work a whole lot better. So this might be a fun little like Friday night restoration project in the not too distant future. Of course, I'd like to go over it fully and do a you know full recap and all that. But this might be a little fun set to uh, do a little troubleshooting instead of the, my usual shotgun approach and you know replace everything. 